What you are looking at is a low-speed electric vehicle frame with 3D printed body panels. Hopefully we'll release a small fleet of these for on-campus travel. So if you need to go from North Campus to Central Campus or just between buildings far away, or maybe there are some VIPs that we want to impress and they dial up an automated golf cart to come pick them up. Being able to 3D print cars allows us to experiment with the shape of the vehicle. Uh, how do we make the vehicle inviting? How do we sort of make the vehicle tell the story that, hey, I'm, I'm an autonomous vehicle, come and ride on me. I am putting the steering wheel on because it's not self-driving yet. So in order to move it back to the lab, we have to shamefully put the steering wheel back on. Shotgun. This is our first autonomous low-speed electric vehicle. We envision in two or three years that we might have a fleet of 50 or 100 of these guys zipping around campus and just basically serving as a force multiplier for the bus system that we have on campus. Wait, guys, is there a, a service elevator that's big enough for this? No, We've got to get it in somehow. Right? <laughs> no, wait, can we get it high Back enough? Down. Back down. Back down. Back down. Back down. <laughs> So a lot of people talk about Woo! intelligent transportation systems that are a bit like using Uber, where you pull out your phone, an autonomous car comes and picks you up. How does a, an autonomous car figure out who on the side of the road called it? How does it identify a safe place to pull over? The goal of this project is really to tackle the transportation system challenges in order to turn it into a viable, economically and socially acceptable transportation system. We've got a, a team of about 16 people, and it's really important to locate the team physically close to where you're testing. We started working at MCD yesterday morning. This gives us a really controlled test environment that is huge for rapid development. One of the disadvantages is that there isn't any actual structure at MCD, like in terms of contained buildings with running water, and so we are in a shipping container with a porta potty. But if that's what it takes to get a cool test facility like this, and so be it. <laughs> All right, are you ready? I'm going to draw a route for the vehicle to take. And three. Hand free. Two, one, and we're live. We spent basically the first month Woo! just trying to get the vehicle to turn the steering wheels and apply the throttle and the brake when we wanted it to. I think the hardest technical challenge is for us to solve the localization problem, being able to keep track of where the vehicle is with respect to the roadway and which lane we're in and all those sorts of things. We've got a GPS system. Uh, and that's aided by encoders on the wheels and a, a fiber optic gyro in the back seat. We also have a laser-based localization system and it's building a 3D map of the vehicle around us. And then the third method that we're looking at is using radio beacon transponders. So later today we're going to be populating about 50 beacons all around M-City. It's not practical to instrument the whole world with hundreds of beacons. But what we could do is on a scale of like a campus-wide navigation system, it is practical on that scale. For a transportation on demand system like this to be really successful is going to require a lot of people to work together. If we're successful though, I think there's a huge upside in terms of social and economic benefits. Jin Sung Kim told me he had some kind of super cool liquid. So I'm out here to ask him, what makes that liquid so cool? When Professor Jin Sang Kim and his team first made the new molecule, they found that it could be either a liquid or...